And a good way to think about how you want to answer an argument is the acronym Dr. Mo. If you haven't covered it before, Dr. Mo stands for deny, reverse, minimize, and outweigh. So I know that you all have already talked about outweigh a lot because whenever you've talked about Mr. T or doing impact comparison, a lot of that's built into minimize and outweigh. So today we're going to focus a lot about deny and reverse because these are some of the most important ways that you can respond to arguments in debate. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say someone tells you, I should go to Florida because it's a lot of fun. I'm going to show you how you'd want to respond to this using Dr. Mo. So, I want to go to Florida because it's a lot of fun. You can say, no, actually, Florida isn't fun because it's too hot. So you can see there's the assertion, no, Florida isn't fun, the reason it's too hot, and then if you wanted to provide evidence about like why it's too hot, you could go ahead and that's where that would go. Um, if you wanted to reverse that, you could be like, actually, Florida is boring, so it's the opposite of fun, because the lines everywhere are way too long. And then if you wanted some evidence for that, you could talk about studies at Disney World, people are probably pretty bored there, honestly. But you can also do minimize no way, too. So those are all about comparison. So if the affirmative says we should go to Florida because it's a lot of fun, the negative would say, actually, we shouldn't go to Florida because then we couldn't study for school. So if you wanted to minimize the benefits of going to Florida, you could be, even if Florida is fun, we can still have fun at home, playing board games or whatever y'all do. Or you can choose to outweigh. And this would look like, even if Florida is fun, it's better to get ready for school, which can help us out later in life, than it is to have fun in the short term. So, one of the examples that we have is the solvency page. That's on page 25 of y'all's packets. And the argument is open borders increase immigration flows without risking harm to U.S. citizens. So, one of the things that the affirmative will always say is, we can open our borders up, we'll have things in place to make sure that nothing happens. But the negative can respond to this in a couple of ways. The negative can deny this claim by saying that no, open borders won't increase immigration flows. Why? What's the reasoning to support this assertion? So, you can make the argument that open borders won't increase immigration flows because immigrants know that when they come to the US there's going to be a lot of problematic labor laws that are going to not actually make their life improve. Or they might know that they aren't going to get paid that much more in their home country. So that's one way that you can argue a deny. So let's have it, you try it on your own. So let's try a reverse. So opening borders would, re, would reduce immigration flows. Why? Why would immigration, or why would an open borders policy cause the immigration flows to not, not go up at all, but to actually go down? So you can use some of what I just said for the deny in your response here, but I would recommend taking some time and writing it out on your sheet. also know what to do if someone reads that argument against you, right? If you've just come up with this potentially killer argument and you've written it down and you're ready to go in the debate round, someone else might have thought of that too, so you should be prepared. So first of all, do you need to answer them? Of course. So that means you need to be flowing when the other team is talking. So this means that when the other team has one of the answers to the fill in the blank sections, you need to pick up on it because they might be reading more than just the cards. So if you're putting all this work into your fill-in-the-blank sections, the other team is probably doing the same as well. So make sure that you have some good ideas of what other teams might say and what you might say in response to that. So the ones that I included in the video might be a good way to start. Um, I'm sure that there are other arguments that you can make for these things as well. So the other thing is that you can't know what the other team said unless you write it down, because it's not already in the packet. So I already emphasized the importance of flowing, but I need to re-emphasize that because the only way you're ever going to be able to clash in the debate round is if you take notes on what the other team says. So we're going to try another example. So I just gave you uh, an example of how to respond to an affirmative argument. We're going to talk about how to respond to a negative argument now. So the next example I have is the economy advantage, which I think in the novice form of the packet it's going to be pages 18 to 20. So a rough summary of that is that increasing immigration to the U.S is necessary to preserve global economic growth and prevent armed conflicts. It's a pretty hot take. You can respond to that in a litany of different ways. Um, so I would pick a specific part of the advantage to respond to. So there's a couple of so there's a couple of cards uh, that the advantage depends on. First, increasing immigration preserves U.S. economic growth. 
That's something that you can pick apart. That might not be true. You can deny that. You can be like, no, increasing immigration won't preserve U.S. economic growth because the aging crisis that the affirmative talks about will just get worse and worse and immigrants can't compensate for it. That's something that you could use as an argument. You can use the affirmative evidence against them by talking about the aging crisis being more severe than it would actually be in terms of what their evidence says. Another thing you could respond to is the argument that U.S. economic growth preserves global economic growth. See, a reverse might be good here. You can be like, actually, when the U.S. economy is growing, other countries aren't growing because the U.S. is taking resources for itself, and it's being kind of selfish. It's an argument you can make. I don't know if it's true or not, because you, these kinds of arguments you don't really want to pull an external evidence for because it's limited to the packet. So this is all about the reasoning that you can provide and how good you can make an argument sound even when you don't have evidence. The last part of the advantage that you can respond to is the impact that global economic growth prevents armed conflict. And here, you could try a minimize or an outweigh, especially if you read, let's say, the wages disadvantage, you could be like, actually, global economic growth is far less important than income inequality, because even though there's a chance of a couple armed conflicts, um, everyone in the US is affected by income inequality when it's at its worst. And that massively reduces quality of life for all American citizens. So that's the way that you can try to talk about in terms of impact comparison with minimizing that way. What I would recommend doing right now is I would pick one of those arguments and then using your fill in the blank section that comes with your answer to the economy advantage, pick one and then come up with one deny reverse minimize your way and write that down. And then talk to your coach about what you've written and hopefully you can use that in a debate round.